R2, is that you? Okay, what, what is this thing? It's, it's making a lot of very strange noises. I, I have no idea how it got here. Okay, I do know a little bit about how it got here. And I know something else that might be interesting about this little gizmo. I know what it used to sound like before I messed with it. And it used to sound like this. Red, circle, blue, square, yellow, triangle. So this used to look like this. So I went to the thrift store and I bought this toy for $2 and I ripped the guts out and I turned it into this thing. So what kind of technological intuition does it take to do something like that? That's what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about how you can learn enough about technology to do this, to take an innocent children's toy and turn it into something really annoying. <laughs> now, why is this interesting? I think it's interesting because in some ways I think this is like the 21st century equivalent of fixing a faucet or checking the tire pressure on your car. You don't need to be a plumber and you don't need to be an auto mechanic to do that, but you have to have some intuition about how these things work. And I'm not alone in thinking that this kind of technological intuition is important. The National Research Council, the National Science Foundation, other organizations like that have been talking for years about technological literacy and how, as 21st century inhabitants of this world, we should know more about the technology that invades our living space. But maybe a better term than technological literacy would be technological fluency. You see, literacy implies sort of a basic understanding, whereas fluency implies that you can not only use, but you can apply, maybe even diagnose, and perhaps even modify things that are bothering you about your world. So I'm here to help. Now, I'm a university professor, so when I say I'm here to help, it probably means something to have to do with a class. And that's exactly what I've done. So I've developed a new class here at the University of Utah, and the name of the class is Making Noise, Sound Art, and Digital Media. And the idea of this class is that I want to help students from all over campus gain some technological fluency. The first time I taught this class, I had students from, from fine arts, from communication, from humanities, from business, from pre-law. Anyone on campus can learn enough about this technology to be dangerous. <laughs> now, I also think it's important that if you're going to try and introduce some technological fluency across campus, that it's in a friendly context that's also a little bit fun. And so for this class, at least, I framed the discussion about technology in terms of sound art, in terms of making art with things that make sound. And so one of the projects from this class is exactly what I just showed you, taking a toy that used to make one sound and turning it into a toy or a, an alien space instrument that makes some other sound. And it turns out that has a name. It's called circuit bending. Circuit bending means take a circuit and bend it or twist it or somehow contort it into doing something it wasn't really supposed to do. So that's one of the projects for the course. Now, I'm not going to teach you the entire semester-long curriculum of this course in the next six minutes, but I would like to explain just a little bit about the electronics and about the circuit bending, so maybe you could go and try this yourself. So if you want to try this yourself, we need to know just a little bit about the electronics that's going on inside the toy that you're about to bend. And it turns out that we can think of electronics very similar to how we think about plumbing. So we have plumbing. If we turn on the pump in this hypothetical example, the water flows through the pipe, and it does something useful. In this case, it's turning a water wheel, so some work is coming out of this. How much water flows in the pipe? Well, that depends on the strength of the pump. It also depends on the diameter of the pipe. Bigger pipe, more water. Little pipe, less water. Well, it turns out electricity works exactly the same way in some sense. The battery is the pump in this case, and it's moving the charge, it's moving the electricity along a conductor and doing something useful like light up a light bulb. So how much current is flowing in the conductor? And it depends on the size of the pipe. In electrical terms, we call that resistance. And if you want less water, less electricity, you make the pipe smaller. Maybe you add something called a resistor to make that conductor more resistive. 
Now, at the risk of making this like a lecture, please don't, don't go to sleep on me, um, there's one more component I want to tell you about. The component is the capacitor. A capacitor stores energy. So in our plumbing example, the capacitor is like a water balloon. If we turn that pump on, the water balloon fills up with water, and the energy of pumping that water into the balloon is stored in the balloon. If we took the pump out, the energy would come spewing out, the water would come out of the balloon where it had been stored. With the electrical version, the capacitor, it does the same thing. The charge is pumped through the battery onto this thing called a capacitor. If we took the battery out of the system, all that electricity would come spewing out just like the water from a water balloon. Okay, it seems like I've drifted a little bit. What does this have to do with this interesting noisemaker? Well, the interesting toys to bend are the toys that make noise. And if a toy makes noise, it needs to know something about time. And the reason it needs to know something about time is because if it's making an audio signal, then it needs to know when it should make the next up and down of that audio signal, because if it's making a noise at a particular frequency, it needs to know that at this particular time it goes up and down to make that frequency. So a circuit that needs to know about time needs to have something in it that takes time to, to happen. And it takes time to fill a water balloon. If you turn on the spigot, it takes time for the water balloon to fill up. It also takes time for a capacitor to fill up. And so an inexpensive toy, like the one that I bought at the thrift store, very likely has a circuit that looks exactly like this. It has a capacitor and a resistor. It's basically measuring how much time it takes to fill up that capacitive water balloon. And that's the time it takes before it makes the next up and down for the frequency. So, how much time does it take between these waves? It depends on the value of the resistance and capacitance. So if we just change those, we can change how the toy sounds. So we'll just take the toy apart, look inside, and simply find which component is related to the timing. It's actually easier than it might look from this slide, and I'm going to demonstrate this using a very high-tech piece of equipment, the Disney Princess keyboard. <laughs> now, the nice thing about the Disney Princess keyboard is that it makes really annoying noises. Okay, so let's take apart the Disney Princess keyboard and see what's inside. Ah, there's a circuit board inside. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a circuit board right here, and that's where the action is. That's what's making all the noise. And so what I'm going to try and do is change the way that circuit board understands the timing of the circuit to change the way this keyboard sounds. And again, I'm going to use some very high-tech stuff. And use my fingers. <laughs> so we'll make it make some noise. Ah, that's interesting. Right there. So, what did I do? All I really did was poke at it. Now I need to turn it off. <laughs> so all I did was poke at this thing with my fingers until I made it change sound. So what happened? Well, my fingers actually are pretty good conductors of electricity. And so by grabbing onto that resistor, I changed the value of the resistance, I changed this circuit's notion of time, and I made it sound different. So now I just snip out that conductor, that resistor, and replace it with something that I can vary, like a knob that has a variable resistor, and now I have a circuit-bent alien instrument. Now here I have to say just one cautionary thing. You sh if you want to try this, you should only try this on a battery-powered toy. <laughs> if it plugs into the wall, don't go near it. <laughs> but that being said, I encourage you to try this. Go to the thrift store and buy a toy, or, or raid the toy bin of an unsuspecting child near you. <laughs> and Take it apart and, and poke at it and see if you can make it do something different. I think you'll have a lot of fun and you'll learn a lot about technology and you might just make a glorious noise in the process. Thank you very much. <laughs>